the Buddha bowl. The Buddha bowl is unified with all things, with the Buddha mind and universal emptiness, and yet it's just the bowl, nothing else. You have shaved your head. Shaving of the head is symbolic of renouncing the worldly life. The Buddha said, "The moment we renounce the world, we're in the midst of innumerable eons. Time moves freely throughout unlimited worlds, and the endless wheel of the Dharma turns. This time is not the time of day or of seasons; it's beyond measurement. In renouncing the world, we make our own body and mind the body and mind of the world itself. You've taken the kesa, the Buddha's robe." One does not perceive the way and receive the kesa merely by chance, nor does one do so as a result of training. Rather, it occurs as a result of one's karma, of the cause and effect that has created the imperative of a monastic calling. Cast aside one's personal life and enter into a vocation of full-time service to all sentient beings. The kesa in which all Buddhas have taken refuge is the body and mind of all Buddhas. You have received the Buddha's precepts, the moral and ethical teachings of the Buddha, that have guided countless generations of Buddhist men and women in living a life of wisdom and compassion for 2,500 years, and now they're yours. Practice them well. They are not meant to bind you, but to make you free. This makes you part of the first generation of the Mountains and Rivers Order Zen Buddhist monastics who have taken these vows, maintaining them as critical not only to the order but to the evolution of a vigorous and authentic Western monastic form itself.
you have not only bonded and committed to the teacher, the teachings, and the lineage, but to all beings, past, present, and future, sentient and insentient. Somehow we were lucky enough to be born at a period of time in the history of this country that the Buddha Dharma came to our shore. Whether it's the sound of the river or the form of a mountain, it is all this incredible Buddha Dharma and it has something to say to us if we can hear it, if we're willing to listen to it. The teachings come not only from designated teachers, but from each other, and from the mountains and rivers in this great earth. Being one with the Sangha, with all sentient beings, lead the people, lead the people, that harmony pervade everywhere. Lead the people. How do you do it? It's by what you do with your life. How you combust your own personal life. How you model the teachings that you profess to practice. This is how we teach our children. This is how we teach each other. This is how we teach ourselves. cowboys a song. I think of my ancestors, my father, my mother, my grandmother. Sometimes when I was sick in the middle of the night, she'd come into the room. I could hear her there chanting. And I could feel the thumb making the sign of the cross on the forehead. And she would be anointing us with some kind of oil. When I said I learned from her, it was the energy that I got from her. And the sense that it's possible. I mean, the neighborhood, to me, was the safest place on earth. Everybody knew me. When you walk down the street in the neighborhood, there are a thousand eyes watching you. There are people at the window, there's the grocer looking across the counter, there's the guy in the fruit stand, there's the kids playing shooting craps in the corner. Everybody knows what's going on and they all know you. So you feel so protected. 
So Christmas meant 50 to 100 people would get together. And Grandma would, you know, be the conductor of this, this Roman feast. one's life out of that not what you've been told or what you should do or shouldn't do but what you know from your own direct experience is who you are my photography teacher Mina White used uh, meditation as an entrance into photographing so my entrance into the Dharma was via the arts. So in Roshi, if you ask him a question of the Dharma, would just as likely hand you a piece of calligraphy or a poem as give you an answer. as I trained with my teacher that my inclination was toward the arts and he told me that if I would come east as the head monk for my Dharma brother who was starting a center in New York that once I helped him get started that I could go off on my own I looked at this building and I said, my God, it's beautiful. And it was, it was holding out its arms and asking me to come in. I didn't know what was in store for me or how I was going to do it or what I was going to do. The basis of our structure there is what uh, I call the eight gates of Zen. Zazen, the teacher-student relationship, liturgy, the precepts, work practice, art practice, body practice, and academic study.
Ruky na ruky, čeky na ruky, sviatka na ruky, čeky na ruky, čeky na ruky, sviatka na ruky. You can't heal unless you let go. That's what you Buddhists knew about letting go. 